we begin tonight with a condition affecting 50 million Americans that some people see as an inevitable part of aging, but doctors say otherwise. Joining us for our Your Health segment tonight is Dr. Elizabeth Streeton, Associate Professor of Medicine and Pediatrics at the University of Maryland School of Medicine and endocrinologist and cr clinical geneticist at the University of Maryland Medical Center. Doctor, thank you for being with us. Thank you for inviting me. They call osteoporosis a silent disease because its progression most of the time happens with nobody knowing about it. Yes, that, that's right. Um, the typical older person you see or may be in your family who has uh, loss of height and kind of curved, maybe curved over, typically doesn't have any pain. Is the loss of height more about uh, the strength of the bones, which is osteoporosis, or about discs compressing with time? So you can lose height from, from both cases, but in osteoporosis, um, the uh, the vertebrae, instead of being beautiful squares, this is the front of the body and this is the back, become a little bit more triangular. And then when you add up the triangles, you get a curve. At, at what age does this typically show up? So osteoporosis typically um, starts at about 50. Um, and gradually... The process or, or, or being able to actually diagnose somebody with it? The, the process is really a... Uh, longer than that, so you can have a low peak bone mass uh, at at your your best bone health in the in the 20s. You may just have a genetically low peak bone mass, um, and that can lead to osteoporosis later on. Or you can just have a normal peak bone mass but lose excessively with age. Is this one of those things where if we if we lived long enough, we would all develop osteoporosis? Actually, not. Um, of those who, who live to 80, about a third of women break their hip and about 25% uh, of men. So it's, it's really not inevitable. It's really a, a complex interplay between uh, genetics and environmental factors. Well, let's start there. How, how do we avoid it as, as we age? Well, um, good kind of healthy living, avoiding smoking and excess alcohol, um, engaging in regular weight-bearing exercise, uh, so any exercise where one is on one's feet or bearing one's weight as opposed to in the water swimming. So when you say weight-bearing, I'm picturing Arnold Schwarzenegger, and it's not that. Yeah, well, I would call that weight training. Ah, and okay. weight training is actually really good for the bones, uh, where you're really uh, trying to build up muscle mass, and it helps to counteract the muscle loss that we all get starting about about age 50. But the kind of exercise I'm talking about would be the same amount of exercise that would be helpful to reduce um, cardiovascular uh, uh, diseases like heart attack. Let's, let's talk terminology for a second. What does osteoporosis mean to a doctor? So osteoporosis um, means that the bones are less strong than normal, and that really has two components. The bones are less dense and then the quality of the bone tissue is, is reduced. So that somebody with osteoporosis is more likely to break a bone with a mild fall. There's also an intermediate diagnosis or term. Yes, so low bone mass, or is also called osteopenia, is the same process. It's really a continuum, but less, less severe. Let's uh, take some phone calls. If you have a question about osteoporosis, give us a call. We'll have the number up on the screen. You can also tweet your questions. Twitter address is at MPT News. We'll begin in Anne Arundel County. This is David. David, thanks for the call. Go ahead. Hello, Jeff. Hello. I'm caller, and uh, I think I have some good advice for people that suffer from this uh, condition. Um, if you go with physical therapy, and you go with a proper acupuncturist, a lot of this will be relieved. My wife has experienced it myself. I had a knee. My wife's a little overweight. Um, I'm not overweight, but if you practice these two things, you can minimize the osteoporosis that sets in with age. Thanks for the call. We'll, we'll uh, get the doctor's view of that. Good advice. Well, I'm wondering if the caller um, possibly might be confusing osteoarthritis with osteoporosis. I don't know if that's the case or not, um, but physical therapy and acupuncture can help the pain related to chronic fractures and osteoporosis 
but it, it won't really help the process itself, the disease itself. Let's uh, take a call from Baltimore City. This is Marsha. Marsha, thank you for the call. Go ahead. Hi, I was um, diagnosed with colorectal cancer five years ago, treated. During that time, I noticed that I became bow-legged. And um, of course, I had a lot of complications with my treatment. I had two ostomies. I'm, you know, clear now, but um, I did have osteoarthritis in my knees, but my doctor just recently found that my vitamin D level was down, and she put me on a one, once a week dose for um, three months. And I don't eat dairy products, and I was taking multiple vitamins with calcium and vitamin D, but still I had this problem. So what else can I do to, um, you know, help myself and other people who may be looking at this kind of a problem? Marsha, best of luck. Thank you for the phone call. A lot of stuff yes, to tackle I, there. Yes, I hope you're, hope you're doing better now. Um, with removal of part of the colon, um, this is an important risk factor for vitamin D deficiency because vitamin D is absorbed in both the small intestine and the colon. So this may be why the, the caller uh, became vitamin D deficient, is there was less area, surface area of the bowel to absorb, uh, absorb vitamin D. Um, there really isn't enough vitamin D in foodstuffs. So we primarily get vitamin D from the sun. And of course, we're all out in the sun less than we were because we're inside. Especially today. Especially today. <laughs> uh, we're inside on our computers and we're wearing sunscreen when we are out. So vitamin D deficiency is more of a problem. So to uh, retain the uh, vitamin D replete state, most people really need to take a vitamin D supplement. Okay, so we, we had talked about a healthy lifestyle, getting some, some exercise and a balanced diet, but even if you're doing that, this is for somebody without a diagnosis of osteoporosis. Still look after your vitamin D? Yes, that's, that's, that's correct. Vitamin D is very important for bone, uh, bone health. And the further away from the equator one lives, the shorter the period of time uh, is that you can make vitamin D in your skin. Uh, let's talk to Chris in Montgomery County. Chris, thank you for the call. Go ahead. Thank you very much for taking my call. Uh, following up on the idea of uh, the vitamin D deficiency, uh, I was calling regarding that in terms of absorbing calcium as you get older, as well as are there different risk factors for men and women? Okay, thanks for, I mean, very interesting I mean, in terms of men and women in this condition. Yeah, so um, I think men are kind of forgotten uh, in osteoporosis the way women used to be with cardiovascular disease. I mean, men do get osteoporosis. It's important for them to, to know this. Um, the uh, amount of vitamin D that men and women need is, is similar, but it's partly related to uh, size. So people who are, who are larger need a, a higher dose. And the best way to determine whether you're getting enough vitamin D is a blood level, vitamin D blood test. What percentage of your patients with osteoporosis are female? Uh, I've read it's a significant majority. It's a, about half, uh, but, uh, osteoporosis is half as common in men. So in our lifetime, one. Uh, one out of every two women will have an osteoporotic fracture, whereas for men it's one in four. And, and in men, uh, even if somebody has a diminished uh, bone density, bones tend to be bigger to begin with, are they less likely to fracture? So yes, but men are, are starting out with more, more bone, and that is one of the reasons why they're less likely to fracture. Let's get some more calls, but I wanted to ask you about the uh, testing. Yes. How would you determine uh, can a plain x-ray do it? So there are two ways to diagnose uh, osteoporosis, and uh, one is by the occurrence of a hip or spine fracture without any other testing. That's osteoporosis until proven otherwise, so it could be cancer or some other problem, but hip or spine fracture alone is enough to diagnose osteoporosis, um, or a DEXA bone density, which is very sim simple 10-minute x-ray type test. Uh, Anne Arundel County, this is Mark. Mark, thank you for the call. Go ahead. Hi, thank you. You bet. Um, I'm curious about this uh, condition because I've had some problems uh, recently with my spine. But um, I get that um, stress, stressing uh, bones and muscles uh, is a positive thing to do. And I wondered if, there, if you really had to uh, pay attention to all the bones in the body, essentially, or if there are specific things uh, that would be most beneficial uh, to exercise. That's a great question. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, that's a that's a great question. So the only only the bones that are 
loaded or exercised will improve from that exercise. So uh, for the hip bone, you know, walking, treadmill, actually adding a little impact, such as um, jumping jacks or any kind of jumping is, is good, but that's not going to help the arms. So for the arms, you would need to do uh, weight, you know, weight training to really build up the, the muscles and build up the bones. So only the bones that are loaded will improve from exercise. What do you have in, in the way of medical treatment? For this, you can say uh, diet, exercise, but you have some medications as well. Yes. Yeah, so for most patients who who have true osteoporosis, um, calcium, vitamin D, and exercise really are not enough. And we have a number of medications. Uh, one big class are the bisphosphonates, and then we have others that are uh, used in in different situations. One is called Prolia, another one is uh, teriparatide. Um, and these medications reduce the risk of fracture by 50 percent, uh, so they're very effective. And um, I think there are some rare but potentially serious side effects, which has um, caused a problem with, I think, getting the right people to, who need treatment to actually accept treatment and get treatment. So in my, in my clinic, I spend a good portion of many visits just reassuring patients that the medication I'm recommending is uh, really not as, as potentially dangerous as they're thinking. Maybe this is obvious, but why does this fall under endocrinology? So uh, historically, um, the first drug available for osteoporosis uh, for women was estrogen. And endocrinologists know a lot about hormones, and, and so it came into um, the endocrine realm. Um, in addition, vitamin D and parathyroid hormone uh, are very important for the bones, and those are all within endocrinology. Um, but there are other specialists, such as rheumatologists, who uh, treat osteoporosis. It sort of depends on the region you live in. Let's uh, go out to Allegheny County. Uh, this is Lisa. Lisa, thank you for the call. Go ahead. Hi, thank you for taking my call. You bet. Uh, I'm in my late 50s, and I'm wondering when should I get a bone density test, and should it be on my knees, my hips, my back, my shoulder? Lisa, thank you very much. How do they do that? Yeah, good question. So the, the DEXA is done of the spine and the hip. That's the, the standard. Um, and all women over 65 and men over 70 should get a DEXA. And younger women uh, who are postmenopausal who have other risk factors. So those would include low body weight, would include certain medications like chronic prednisone use. Um, those who are Caucasian are more at risk than those who are African American or Hispanic. Those who smoke or who drink excessively. Uh, or have a, an early loss of estrogen. So those would be all characteristics that would come into play in when it, whether the caller should have a DEXA. Does it run in families? Is, is there a family history of this? Yes, osteoporosis is very hereditary. Um, if you yourself have a normal DEXA, but your mother, father broke a hip, then your own risk uh, goes up quite, quite dramatically. And um, so it is, genetics are a very important part of it. Uh, Sussex County, Delaware. This is uh, Gay. Thank you for calling. Go ahead. Uh, uh, thank you for taking my call. Yes. Uh, doctor, I am a Caucasian woman, 79 years old. I have had one hip replacement, and I am, I think, due for another one. I have another appointment with uh, um, my doctor soon, who did the first surgery. I'd like to know... Um, does this relate to osteoporosis, this knee, having to have knee surgery and having to have hip surgery? Is this a part of, of osteoporosis? Will it lead to that or not necessarily? Thank you. Thank you. So, uh, again, a very good question, an important distinction between osteoarthritis, which is probably what the caller has. Osteoarthritis is a disorder of the cartilage and the cartilage is at the end of the, the long bones and makes up the joints. And that's really a totally different situation from osteoporosis, which is a problem only of the bones themselves. Interesting that we've had that confusion yes, with two yes, callers. Yes, it's a common, uh, a common confusion among people. We talked um, about vitamin D a bit. Uh, calcium, 
do calcium supplements make sense or having dairy in your diet or what about people who can't tolerate that? Yeah, so calcium is uh, an important component of bone and those who don't get enough calcium um, are more at risk for osteoporosis. I generally try to get patients, uh, try to recommend it in the diet. Um, dairy products are the, the richest source of calcium, but for those who who, who are um, lactose intolerant, there are many alternatives now, there's many milks that are not cow-based, almond milk, soy milk, uh, uh, and for those who really can't get it in the diet, then a supplement is recommended. Uh, let's take another call. Howard County, uh, this is Pam. Pam, thank you for the call, go ahead. Hi, thank you. I'd like to know, are you able to stop osteoporosis, and if you can stop it, are you able to reverse the damage that's been done? Very good, thank, thank you. you. Do, do the medications do that? Yeah, so the medications... Um, and also without the medications, but start there. Yeah, so with medications, yes, we can absolutely halt the process and reduce the risk of fracture. Now, in terms of increasing um, the amount of bone that's there, we have only one, one drug that can really do that, that's a so-called anabolic uh, agent. The other drugs work primarily by reducing bone, bone breakdown, but the end result is the same, which is a reduction in risk of fracture. And so, yes, absolutely, we can do something about it and reverse the, the effects of it. Very good. Dr. Elizabeth Streeton of the University of Maryland, thank you for your time. Okay. Your health segments are a co-production of Maryland Public Television and the University of Maryland Medical System.